everyone. So today we will solve a viewer suggested interval, namely the interval from 0 to 2 of the natural log of x squared plus 2 all over x plus 2 whole thing squared. And I believe this interval was taken from an exercise book of some kind. Just pointing that out for fun. Okay, so without further ado, let's start this interval. So first, it might be a good idea to get rid of this natural log of x squared plus 2. And to do so, we will get we will use integration by parts. So we will differentiate x squared plus 2 and we'll integrate 1 over x plus 2 whole thing squared. For this one, we get, okay, the denominator will be x squared plus 2, and then by the chain rule, we have 2x, derivative of x squared plus 2, and then here we have negative 1 over x plus 2, which is the power rule. And now we can just do the usual integration by parts stuff, so we get natural log of x squared plus 2 over x plus 2. But then we're supposed to have a minus, but we evaluate this from 0 to 2. And we can use the negative sign to interchange the two bounds at which we are evaluating. So because of the minus sign, instead of evaluating at 0 and 2, we can evaluate at 2 and 0. And then minus minus is plus, so we get plus the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x all over x squared plus 2 times x plus 2. And now... Let's evaluate this. So let me do this in red. So we have the natural log of 2, and 0 over 2, minus, plug in 2, natural log of 6 over 4. But then 6 is nothing but 2 times 3. And we can use logarithmic properties to break this up as natural log of 2 plus natural log of 3. So we get... 1 half natural log of 2, and this should be the minus sign as well, minus 1 fourth natural log of 2, minus 1 fourth natural log of 3, and we get 1 half minus 1 fourth is 1 fourth, so we get 1 fourth natural log of 2, minus 1 fourth natural log of 3. So we can substitute that into our interval, so we get... 1 fourth natural log of 2 minus 1 fourth natural log of 3 plus the interval from 0 to 2 of 2x all over x squared plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2 and with respect to x. Good. And now this interval can easily be evaluated using partial factors decomposition. And this is exactly what we'll do. So let me do this in blue. So we have 2x all over x squared plus 2 times x plus 2. And now, for x squared plus 2, we'll have some ax plus b in the numerator because it's an irreducible quadratic. And for our x plus 2, we'll have some constant c in the numerator because it's a linear term. And then we can just multiply both sides by x squared plus 2 times x plus 2. To get that, we'll, for, we'll do the right-hand side first. So here the x squared plus 2 cancels out. So we get ax plus b times x plus 2. On the right-hand side, the x plus 2 cancel out. So we get c times x squared plus 2 is equal to 2x because here the everything cancels out. And then what happens if we plug in x is equal to negative 2 in this expression? Well, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, which means this whole term will go to 0. And we're left with c times negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. So we get c times 6 is equal to 2 times negative 2 is equal to negative 4, which means c is simply equal to negative two-thirds. So we have c is equal to negative two-thirds. And then we can substitute this into our expression, and we'll multiply both sides by 3 to get rid of the fractional thing. 
So we'll get ax plus b times, I'll distribute the 3 to the x plus 2 times 3x plus 6. And then for the c, the 3 times plus, we'll get negative 2 times x squared plus 2 is equal to 3 times 2x, which is equal to 6x. And now all, all that is left is to expand everything else. So we get 3ax squared plus 6ax plus 3bx plus 6b minus 2x squared minus 4 is equal to 6x. And now we can just compare coefficients. So for the x squared coefficient, we have 3a right there. And we have a negative 2. And this is equal to 0 because we technically have a 0 x squared on the right hand side. For the x terms, we have 6a plus 3b is equal to 6, coefficient of the linear term. And for the constant terms, we have 6b minus 4 is equal to 0 because technically we have a plus 0 right there. And now, here we can easily solve for a to get a is equal to 2 thirds. For, from our last equation, we can see that b is equal to 4 6. A is equal to 4 6, but 4 6 reduces down to 2 thirds. And we can just plug those in and check that, you know, plug those values of a and b into our second equation and check that this indeed holds, which means our a is 2 thirds and our b is two-thirds. And now that we have our partial fractions decomposition, I will clean up this board and we will plug this partial fraction decomposition into this integral and continue from there. Okay, so now that I've cleaned up this board, we can continue evaluating this integral. And there, there's supposed to be a plus right there instead of an equal sign, I'm sorry. And also I have factor out the two-thirds because we had the two-thirds x plus two-thirds here and negative two-thirds there. So I just factor out the two-thirds for clarity. And then what we can do is we can split this x, x plus one over x squared plus two as follows. So we have one-fourth natural log of two minus one-fourth natural log of three plus two-thirds and then the interval from 0 to 2 of x over x squared plus 2 plus 1 over x squared plus 2 minus 1 over x plus 2 dx. And now we can just break this integral into three integrals and factor out the necessary constant. So we have 1 fourth natural log of 2 minus 1 fourth natural log of 3 plus two-thirds interval from 0 to 2 of x over x squared plus 2 dx, plus two-thirds interval from 0 to 2 of 1 over x squared plus 2 dx, minus two-thirds interval from 0 to 2 of 1 over x plus 2 dx. But then for... For this interval right there, I would like to bring the 2 inside of the interval for reasons that will soon become apparent. And now, we will call this first interval I1, I for integral, we'll call this second interval I2, and finally this last interval We'll call it I3. And we'll in, we will evaluate each of these intervals separately. So let's start with our I1. So our I1, let me write it, is the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x all over x squared plus 2 dx. And now we'll introduce a substitution. Namely, we'll let u be x squared plus 2, which means du will be 2x dx. And now, well, we can just plug everything in, so we get 
plugin 0 into here, we get 2, plugin 2 into here, we get 6. So we get our 2x dx is exactly what we have here, and we have 1 over u du. But then, this is just the natural log of u evaluated at 2 and 6, which is just the natural log of 6 minus natural log of 2. But then, natural log of 6 minus natural log of 2 can be expressed as natural log of 6 over 2 by logarithmic properties, and since 6 over 2 is just 3, we get the natural log of 3. And then, for our i2, i2, which I will write over there, we have the interval from 0 to 2 of 1 over x squared plus 2 dx. And now, I would like to observe that 2 can be written as the square root of 2, but squared. And why did I do this? Well, we can now use... Um, a formula which can easily be derived using trigonometric substitution and that formula is that the entire derivative of 1 over x squared plus a squared dx is equal to 1 over a inverse tangent of x over a plus some arbitrary constant c and and then again this inter this formula can easily be derived using trigonometric substitution so we get oh yeah so, so we have our a is the square root of 2 in this case, so we get 1 over the square root of 2, which I will write as square root of 2 over 2, rationalizing the denominator, inverse tangent of x over the square root of 2, evaluated at 0 and 2. At 0, this just vanishes because inverse tangent of 0 is 0, and we have the square root of 2 over 2 times inverse tangent of 2 over the square root of 2. 2 over the square root of 2 is just the square root of 2, so we get square root of 2 over 2, inverse tangent of the square root of 2. And then, finally, for our i3, is equal to the interval from 0 to 2 of 1 over x plus 2 dx. But then this is just the natural log of x plus 2, evaluated at 0 and 2, plug in 0, plug in 2, we get natural log of 4 minus natural log of 2, but then natural log of 4 minus natural log of 2 is natural log of 4 over 2 by logarithm properties, which is simply the natural log of 2. And now that we have all of these values for our required intervals, well, we can just plug them into this equation, but I will clean up this board again because there's no way I can fit everything in. Okay, so now that I've cleaned up this world, we can finally, well, finish evaluating this interval. So, I would like to know this, that for here we had 2 over 3 times, well, 2 thirds times square root of 2 over 2, the 2's cancel out, and this is why we get a square root of 2 over 3 in front of the inverse tangent of the square root of 2. And really all that is left is just to combine like terms. So we get, okay, so for the natural log of 2 terms, we get 1 fourth minus two thirds, which is, let me think for a second, we have three twelfths minus eight twelfths, which is negative five twelfths natural log of two. Negative five twelfths natural log of two. Plus, okay, and then we have one third minus one four natural log of three, which is one twelfth natural log of three. So just to make it nice, I'll write it as one twelfth natural log of three minus 5 twelfths natural log of 2 and then plus square root of 2 over 3 inverse tangent of the square root of 2 and this ladies and gentlemen is our quite long answer so yeah this was a nice little interval to yeah as an exercise because because I, I said earlier, I think I said that earlier, it was taken from a book. And yeah, I believe this is a nice exercise for, well, integration by parts, partial, partial fractions, and stuff like that. So, this is the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this video. Bye.